Good morning, friends. It is Friday. It is 9.35, so I am a few minutes late. My apologies. Um, I'm still sort of settling into this Friday routine and figuring out what works best and what is allows me the most time. But here we are. So I, um, once again, hey, Sandra, am sort of creating off the cuff because I didn't have time to actually prepare something. But I am using the catalog for inspiration, so if any of you want to sort of follow along, um, I am looking at page 30 in the holiday catalog, and we're looking at the Brightly Gleaming Suite. So um, I've got a few of the different elements from this suite that we're going to work into this card. So we have the gorgeous DSP, and uh, instead of using the side with the copper foil, we are going to flip it and uh, use the more subtle side. We're gonna bring in our copper in some other ways. So we're gonna take a look at this designer, the star designer elements. We're also gonna look at using these beautiful um, foil elements, the brightly gleaming foil elements, which I had not opened yet. So you get six sheets in the package. So you get 50 of these elements in all. Um, so we're gonna use those. We are going to use the copper ink pad, which I finally got this week. It had been on back order. We're gonna use the stamp set. We're gonna use the punches. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get a little bit crazy here. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, hey, Nicole. So we have our um, pretty peacock. Oh, I did not do a good job of scoring that. Uh, card stock. Unfortunately, I think my bone folder is and I have used a ton of this cardstock um, since it came out. I think it is probably my favorite new in color. And then of course, because it matches so well with the paper in this suite, which is gorgeous, I have used a lot for that purpose. So if you don't have this color yet, I mean, we, it's gonna be with us for a couple of years, so no need to rush, but it is a must have, it's beautiful. So the DSP, we're gonna use this side, so we're bringing in our Mossy Meadow, our Knight of Navy, the white, and the peacock, okay? So I've just sort of cut this to fit. Um, we're using our standard card size, so that's our eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And then I have cut this, so it is um, five and an eighth, or no, pardon me, five and three eighths, so we don't have as much um, border on top and bottom as we do on the sides. And on the sides, I went with our standard four. Um, and then actually, I think I trimmed that down to three and seven eighths. So we have a little bit more border, okay? So that's what our border is. So now I wanted to incorporate a few elements. I'm, I'm loosely going off what I'm seeing in the catalog, but I'm gonna kind of mix it up a little bit. So I want to use these foil um, accents. They're beautiful. And if you take the two that are the same, you can flip them upside down then and get that lovely pattern. I also wanted to incorporate some green behind that. So we are going to use this die, which is part of the Christmas layers dies. So these dies look like this. You have the beautiful snowflakes in here, and then you have this really pretty sort of more of a florally um, kind of die. And uh, I keep looking for ways to incorporate these into my projects. I haven't been able to incorporate them into my Stampa Stacks, which is what I've been busy doing because they're fairly ornate and uh, it's a lot of work for me to then mass produce that for all my attendees. So we are going to just use this one here, okay? So we are going to cut out um, two of these in Mossy Meadow. And then, that, and then we're gonna trim them to sort of make them work for what we want. So you can see that I had already scored this to make it a card front, which we don't need, but there's no value in wasting it. I don't have tons of musty meadow cardstock at the moment. So I'm going to just cut that in half and use that to take it through our die, our big shot. Okay, and I'm gonna make two of these. And I could probably actually cut them out uh, two at a time because this die isn't super ornate, but I don't wanna risk that it's not gonna cut. So I am just gonna do it one at a time. And I'm going to, as always, sort of do that off to the side versus moving the big shot back and forth. So that is what I am presently doing. I am just big shotting those dies off to the side, okay? But we are gonna be using all of these things in the card. All right, so there is 
one. And if you are lucky enough to have a stockpile of the adhesive sheets, which have since retired, you could use those for this project behind this. Um, or you can just use my trick with the snail and your um, silicone sheet. So because I want to maximize my paper, I'm now gonna flip it over so that I can kind of run the die through this way and uh, we don't waste as much paper and don't make, uh, we, have, we make scraps that are a little more, more user friendly. So I'm gonna run this die through again so that we have two of these. And we may not actually end up needing two, but then that's fine. It just means I can make another version of this card. Okay, so there is two of those in our mossy meadow. This would actually, he could probably do something really pretty with that. So we're gonna set that aside for now. And we're gonna set aside our die. And instead of just setting it aside, we are actually going to put it away. Because that, my friends, is the best way to know where your dies are versus uh, but while I've got these out here, I'll show you because I cut one of these other, I cut some of these other, this is that other shape that I had cut out. It's very pretty, um, but it wasn't working for the design I was going for, for another card. So until another time. Okay. So those are that set aside. Okay. In the catalog, the image that they have uses vellum. So it uses vellum over this stripe so that we can actually have something else going on. So fine, I have vellum, I thought I could do that, but because I never really like to case things exactly, I thought why not use this tissue paper? So in these foil elements, there is a piece of tissue between each layer. It's white, perfect. It is a bit thicker than I want, so that's fine. I'm gonna cut it down, but we're gonna use that instead of vellum. So waste not, want not. This comes with what something that we have to start with, so why would I waste it? So I'm gonna kind of look and see roughly how big I want it to be. So I think I want a piece to be roughly three and a quarter, and I'm gonna want it to be, I think like four inches. So three and a quarter by four. Now, I'm actually not sure if my paper cutter is gonna cut that very nicely, so I'm gonna give that a try. Um, so three and a quarter, I said, by four. Let's see what happens. No, we're okay. Three and a quarter by four, okay. So now we have our tissue, lovely. And then we will adhere our tissue everywhere that we put something over top of it. Cause if you're kind of wondering like, oh, how are you gonna adhere that without it looking terrible? Okay, so our plan now, similar to what they have in the catalog, is to do something like this up top. But I also want to incorporate some green behind it. So I think what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get our scissors. So I know that I don't want this bit. So I'm gonna snip off this bit here. So we can kind of go like that. It's gonna go behind. And then we want a tiny bit more there. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of snip this and we're gonna kind of attach that in behind and we're gonna lose this. Okay, so we're gonna start with that and we're gonna see how that goes. So I'm gonna kind of want that in behind there like that. All right, you see what I got going on here, kids? Okie dokie. So we're going to stick those to the side. And we're going to 
keep that to the side for now. So the other part that is in this card is um, some ornaments. So one of the ornaments is actually the reverse of this paper. Hey, Chandra. Um, so I'm going to just use that because that's um, what that has going on. I don't think I have any of this cut. If I have some cut, that would make more sense. But I don't think I have any pieces cut that are actually big enough to use as a scrap. I do not. So we're just going to punch um, out of this. And I never, I try to save as much paper as I can. So we're gonna stick to the edges. Hey, Jeanette, nice to see you, so to speak. Okay, so that is one of those ornaments, gorgeous. The other thing that they have done in this card is they have used the copper foil and the hammered embossing folder. So we're gonna do that. And because I don't wanna waste, and waste maybe isn't the right word, but because this copper foil is gorgeous and it goes so nicely with this suite, and I don't want to, and I wanna have as much of it as I can, for making additional projects. I'm going to punch it out first and then we're gonna emboss it rather than embossing a big section of it. Now, if I knew I was gonna mass produce this card, then you might want to, you know, pick a section that you know, hey, at least you could punch out a whole bunch of like, and then emboss that one big thing. So we've got those. And we are also going to use our Mossy Meadow and our lovely new stamp pad and our, we are going to stamp this beautiful design. So this ink is gorgeous. I used it when I went to um, North Shore Stampers Retreat. It was beautiful. And I'm going to, how, where's our punch? We stick the pointy end in. Okay, I'm gonna make this work because I don't like to waste paper. So we're gonna stamp that. So you can see how pretty that is, I hope. Okay, and then we're going to cut this, even though I said it would be, might look cool for something. It is not going to work for us now. And we're gonna kinda have to go like this too. Okay, so if you ever have a scrap of paper like I've done now, and now you're like, oh my God, how do I actually fit it into my punch? That's not working, I've cut too much off of it. You grab yourself a post-it note, okay? So you take a post-it note, stick it on the back, stick it on the front, wherever it works, and now it instantly makes our scrap bigger. And then we can put it into our punch. So this is a great way for you to be able to use as much paper as possible and still do punched images. It comes in very handy when you're handing out scraps if you're a demonstrator and you're doing a class um, to get the most out of it. So now it doesn't even matter that that's stuck on the back, right? No biggie. Um, or you could try to peel it off, but for us it doesn't matter, so we're gonna leave it. Okay, so we have these three ornaments. We're gonna run that one. Oh, you're welcome for the tip through the embossing folder. So I'm gonna quickly do that off to the side. This folder is so pretty, this um, hammered metal. It looks really neat. It's also really neat, I showed this in a video one day, you can actually ink up the folder and then run it through on white and then it kinda looks like cracked ice. Hey Kel. All right, I'm glad I could share that tip with you guys. All right, so we're gonna put that through. You're gonna see how pretty that's gonna be. That's another way to sort of figure out if you've got your folder the way you want it. So you can see we're gonna get it pressed up like that. Um, if we did it the opposite way, we'd get it where it was sunken. So you just have to decide, do you want it sunken or do you want it pressed up? And when I actually look at the, the sample in the catalog, it looks to me like they did it the opposite way so that it was um, sunk versus popped up. It was more like that. 
So maybe we'll do that too. So that is a good way um, for you to sort of play around with your folders. And that's also how I decide whether or not I'm gonna put a folder on a card. I like literally just put it and then see if I like what's going on, okay? So we are gonna do it this way. Um, and I am gonna run that through. It doesn't matter how I have it lined up here because it uh, is a small piece. And it is one of our 3D, new 3D embossing folders. So I'm going to use that new shim, which just makes it easier. If you don't have it, it doesn't mean you can't do it. You just need to shim up one of your original plates. Alrighty, so there we go. See, so gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, so now we have our three ornaments. So we're gonna start to put this card together and we're gonna hope that it all comes together just how we want it. So let's bring our card front back. There are a couple of other little elements that we still need to do, but we're gonna sort of start to put things together first. So, because I don't want everything moving around on me, I'm gonna adhere this down first, okay? So we're gonna use our snail, or you can use um, the white glue. So one thing that you might notice, again, I learned this at the retreat, sometimes the snail doesn't really stick very well to the foil. So if you are using this DSP and noticing that you want the opposite side to the foil, and your snail, or tape runner, whatever you're using, kind of lifts off or it sort of is breaking up, it's because it's not sticking to the foil. So that's where you might want to bring out your uh, white glue, the Tombow glue, or you may want to even use your tear and tape. Okay, so we're going to center that on. There you go. This paper will be excellent after Christmas for masculine cards. So if you happen to have any left, which I can't even imagine you would because it is gorgeous, it would be perfect for that. Now, my tissue paper was disappearing. Okay, so we're gonna put on our tissue paper. Now, what's gonna happen? I know that I am going to end up laying these ornaments on the paper. So once I get where I want this paper to be, I might actually stick one of these ornaments on so that the tissue can be stuck down and then we can do this part or maybe we'll just do that part last I'll just kind of lay this out and stick these guys on and then we'll do that part last what I also want to do though so in the catalog is it regular tissue paper it's the tissue paper that came behind this foil element is what I'm using um, in the catalog, they drew with black marker the ornament line, and I really, I'm not digging that. So I'm going to use a glue dot, and I'm going to use um, some twine, the, or the, um, the linen, and that is going to be our string for our ornaments, okay? And then I'm just going to put a length on there and trim it off and then we can figure that out after the fact. So I'm gonna do that for all three. So I'm just gonna take a glue dot, I'm gonna put it on my ornament. Um, what would look lovely here, but I kid you not, it is not super easy to work with for this type of thing, would be the copper metallic thread. But as much as I love metallic thread, it is not always your friend when you want it to do something like this, a straight line. It is lovely wrapped behind projects, um, but I have tried it before for this kind of thing and it's a bit finicky and so I just wasn't interested in trying that right now, so we're gonna do this instead. Um, it's also very finicky for tying bows, so if you think you wanna try a bow with that metallic thread, um, good luck and I would love to see your end result. I have found it to be a little bit too much for my poor brain to manage. Okay, so we have that. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I'm trying to decide if I wanna use dimensionals, and I don't, I think I actually probably do. 
So we're going to get out some dimensionals here. And we're going to stick them. Mm, actually, if I use dimensionals, then it makes it trickier for my string. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, see, this is how the mind works. And then I have to stick everything else up. Okay, so we're not. We're going to use dimensionals down the way. Okay, so we're going to stick this here because we know that's where we want it. And then I am going to put adhesive on the back of my ornaments. And it's going to stick across the top because it's got the glue dot. So we're going to start with one and go from there. So we're going to start down here in the bottom. And this is going to hold our tissue, which is going to be fabulous. Then we're going to do this guy, and you could put it on in whatever sort of pattern you want. You could do stripes, you could do vertical, horizontal. I'm going to mix it up here. All right, then we're going to do this one. This one's going to kind of tuck like that. You just have to make sure we have room for this one. They're going to overlap a bit, so that's going to be fine. Okay, so we're going to put that one down. And then we're going to do our foil. I'm going to make sure I have an extra bit on here because it's been embossed. And I find then it doesn't always stick as well. This one's going to go a little bit lower. And you're going to, you're going to see we're going to put a, another ornament there. Okay. So there is our three ornaments all right so very pretty and now our tissue is well it's stuck down there so what we're gonna do is and this is my classic move so maybe in hindsight I wouldn't have done it quite like this but I'm going to kind of lift this and I'm gonna put a big bit of snail where each oh okay we'll just take it right off each of the ornaments is because that's gonna allow us to adhere. And now I know we're gonna put something up here, so I'm actually gonna put a bit of snail in the center up of the top, because I know that I'm gonna put that bow of sticker across there. Okay, so we're gonna bring this back down, center it how we had it, and now stick that down okay so that is your trick for when you're using vellum or tissue if you're as long as you're putting something over top of it then that's where you can put your adhesive and actually you can't even barely see that okay voila so we're going to want to cut those but we're not going to worry about them right now because we're going to actually adhere everything underneath of it okay i'm going to get out my adhesive mat here and we're gonna work with what we wanted to have happen here. So I wanted it to go like that. So I need this to come in behind. So I'm gonna flip that over and then I'm gonna add some snail here and I'm gonna put that down And then we're gonna snip it away where it doesn't look good. And then I don't really want this overlap here. So I'm gonna snip that off. Okay. And then I'm going to put a little bit more right here. All right. So now I have what I like for this. Okay. And then we are going to just place the copper 
over top. And then you're not gonna see that because we're gonna put a bow there. So you can see how that's giving us a pretty effect. We're getting the green, so it kind of just breaks up the copper and it gives us a bigger um, anchor for the top of this card. Okay, so I'm gonna take that off to start. And so then this, these silicone sheets, like um, if you don't have one, you want to have one. So you can then just snail the ends of everything and it doesn't stick to the silicone. So it sticks to your paper, um, but it doesn't stick to your scrap paper that you work on. It doesn't stick to your card front. Um, it doesn't make a, make a mess of your desk. Um, it really is worth having. It's not a lot of money. Uh, it's in the annual catalog. And now that I have one, I would never be without it. And then you can see sometimes you'll still get snail in the cracks or the like spaces of your so you just take your um, take a pick tool this is my backup one so we just use our tool right take your pick and uh, get that out okay so now we have adhesive on the back of that so we're gonna bring this in again and we just want to make sure each of these is sort of standing straight up so what I'm gonna do I'm actually going to use my block up top so that those are where we want them because once we stick this down they will be stuck underneath of it all right so we're going to take this and we're going to center it on there all right Press that down, okay? And then we're gonna be able to cut those off after. What's the name of the mat? It is called, oh, here it is, oh, nope. It is the silicone craft sheet. It's on page 183 of the annual catalog and it is 825. Okay, so we've got that on there. We're gonna do the same with this now and our snail. You could use glue dots um, or like your fine tip glue pen if you don't have the mat and if you just prefer. Um, I'm just lazy and I just think this works well. So that's why I do it this way. All right, so this is the one that's gonna go up. And we kind of want it to be, we want to make sure it's fairly centered where the, the overlap is. Because we're going to put a bow there. And now what they did in the catalog, they actually used the linen thread for the bow. And like I said, they used marker for the ornament um, strings and I just didn't love how that looked. They also use vellum, like I said. So when you finish watching this video and if you go to page 30 of your holiday catalog, you're gonna see this card that we have made. You're gonna see how we have changed it. So I am going to use now this copper trim. So this was in the annual catalog. It was very popular when it came out. Um, so it's its second year being in the catalog and we're going to make our bow from this and then we're just going to add that up top like that okay so we're going to attach that with the glue dot oh you know what we have one last ornament to put on here um, which I should have done because we're going to need the thread. So we're going to have to get a little bit tricky. That's fine. It's part of my charm. Maybe it can stick under the bow. Okay, we need our sentiment. So we're going to do this Deck the Halls with Boughs of Holly. That is what they did in the catalog. We're going to do it on white. Mm, yes. And 
and uh no pardon me we're gonna do it on vanilla it is vanilla that is in this card not white i thought it didn't look quite like white vanilla so we're gonna find a scrap we're gonna see if i have a scrap that is big enough and it's actually gonna fit in here and you're probably like what i don't think so so actually what's going to fit is just the deck the halls okay so in the catalog they did it in the peacock just to bring that color back in so we will do the same so this is where our marker comes in handy um yes vanilla chandra thank you so we're going to use our stamp and rate marker i love the markers i buy them still even though we have the blends all right so we're just going to color in the part we want we just want deck the halls And we are going to stamp it on here. So what you can do, so you know what, I'm gonna stamp that over again. So what you can do with the markers is you can huff, once you've put it on there, you can huff on it to just really um, get it. Make sure it's like it's just been freshly inked. <gasps> so we will do that. There we go. So now we have a, crisper uh, image than we had on the other side. All right, we might have to use our post-it note trick again. We will, okay. So I'm gonna just peel it off of here because it's still got sticky on it. And I'm gonna stick it on to the back of this guy. It's a great trick, I'm telling you. I use it all the time. So in this case, this is actually too long where I have put it. So I'm gonna stick it up even higher. We still might have to cut this off, I think. No, there we go, okay. So this is gonna center just like that in the middle of this. Okay, we're gonna cut that out. Again, it doesn't matter that we have the post-it note on the back. We're going to take our glue dot again and put it here. We're gonna take a bit of twine and we are going to attempt to work our magic. So this ornament I actually wanted stuck up with a dimensional. So I am going to cut my twine and I'm gonna see if I can, yes, lift that up. This is sometimes the beauty of not totally pushing too hard to start and then we're going to take a dimensional stick that on the back of there all right so we're going to decide where we want this put it there pull that up there tight and then really stick that down Okay, so that still works. We're gonna take our scissors. We are going to snip all of these off now so that you won't even know how we did this. Same with this guy. If you're wondering why I'm not using my Stampin' Up! snips, it is merely because I have been crafting all over the house. I have club tonight and I was crafting upstairs while I was answering the door for trick-or-treating so I kind of have craft supplies everywhere okay we're gonna bring our um, copper trim back in again we're gonna use our trusty glue dot on that and then this is going to center up here and we can make these smaller if we like and then trim them some more it's the only problem with this copper trim and probably because i'm not really using the best scissors so i might actually pull out
Here they are. Okay, and we can try to get a nicer edge on that. All right, so I think this card looks lovely as is. This could just be it right here. Um, but in the catalog, so if we want to keep this the case, they use these star designer elements. So these are already have adhesive on them. They are awesome. So they had one up here. They had one over here. And they had a third one down here like that. Okay, so there you have it, my friends. There is the card. Thank you for joining me. Uh, that was a bit of a long video, but it is a bit more of an involved card, so not necessarily super quick or super simple. Um, so thank you for joining me. If you see any project, any products in this project that you would like to purchase, by all means, please do. You can contact me or I have my November host code up on my page. So use that host code when you're placing an order. Um, if anyone were to order any of these products today and your order totals more than $60, then I would love to send you some of the... I will send you half a pack of these stars as a thank you, okay? So any of these items that we use today with an order totaling $60 and you will get half a pack of the stars in the mail. So I just wanted to show you the card that we actually cased. So here's the card we cased on page 30, okay? And then here is my version. So you can see it is quite similar, but I did a different thing with the threads. I did the different bow and then I did that other um, framelit in behind. All right. So thank you, ladies. Hopefully everybody is over the shock of Halloween. Have a fabulous Friday. It's another gorgeous day out there. Don't forget that the new paper trimmer is live today for purchase, as well as the um, new suite. Uh, all right. Thanks. Have a good one.